Hey everyone, Taku here. I hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for watching my videos on the Nikon Z8. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the pre and post release burst mode features. Now this feature was an added feature for the Nikon Z9 in one of their firmware releases after the camera released. But for the Nikon Z8, it actually comes by default right out of the box. And it's a feature that some may call a game-changing feature for sports, action, or wildlife photographers. And I tend to agree because uh, out of my use uh, in uh, testing this with birds, I was able to capture images that I would normally not be able to capture had I just used my finger for a shutter release in uh, normal mode. So we're going to dive deep into this feature and I hope you'll join me uh, with the Nikon Z8 pre and post released burst mode. All right, so now going into our settings menu inside the Nikon Z8, we will go scroll down to custom setting menu on the left hand side, go into menu D for shooting and display. And when we scroll down to D3, we have the pre-release capture options. So press right there and then you get two options the pre-release burst and post-release burst so let's go through this one by one the pre-release burst if you click on the right hand side there you have the option of turning it off 0.3 seconds 0.5 seconds and one second so what this will do is when you press the shutter button halfway or if you're using the back button auto focusing if you press that the camera will actually buffer a certain amount of images for this length amount of time that you have set in this option and how fast it actually buffers the image will depend on the burst mode that you have it set to. Now, one thing to note here is the pre-release capture options is only available on the release mode of 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. So depending on which option you choose, if you hold down the, ha uh, the shutter button for halfway for a full one second, then it'll actually pre-capture 30, 60, or 120 frames uh, right before you fully press the shutter button. I actually keep it just that one second so I can get a full 30 images before I fully press the shutter button. Uh, that's just the, my way of getting the maximum amount of pre-burst uh, images. Now that we have the pre-burst, if we go back one to the post-burst option, now we have if you click right, we have an option of one, two, three, or max. And what this does is it's asking you how many seconds after you fully press the shutter button do you want to capture images. So if you leave it at one second, then even if you hold down the shutter button for more than one second, it'll only capture images for that full one second. Uh, similarly for two and three seconds and maximum I believe it actually maxes out at around four seconds so you're able, only able to capture at most four seconds after the shutter button is fully pressed so if you have this at max and if you have the pre-burst at one second then when you press that shutter button you'll actually be taking a full five seconds of images at 30 60 or 120 frames per second so that's quite a bit of images that you're going to have to look through and call through to find the one image that you're looking for when you turn on the pre-release burst mode on the nikon z8 you switch the release mode from whatever you were originally at to either C30, 60, or 120. Now, when you select either one of those options, you will now see the pre mark on the right hand side of the screen, and that indicates that you have pre burst mode enabled. Now, once you have the pre burst mode enabled and you have pressed the shutter button or pressed the back button autofocus button, you'll see that a green light appears beside the pre icon. And that's an indication that the camera is actually buffering images at your C30, C60, or C120 frames per second. Now, if you hold this down for 
up to 30 seconds, it will buffer those images. However, I think 30 seconds is the max at which point the green icon will in fact turn into an exclamation mark. And that is an indication the camera is no longer buffering. So what you need to do is let go of the shutter button or back button autofocus and then depress it again to reset the buffering of your images. So is it worth it? Well, I believe it is because it actually enables you to capture that one split second moment that you are not able to capture with just a regular mode of shooting. Our reactions are only so fast that if you're taking pictures of birds, for example, uh, perched on a branch and ready to fly away, our reaction is just not fast enough to actually capture that bird as it flies right off the branch, unless, of course, you anticipate that action and you time it perfectly. So let's go over some examples that I did uh, over on Lightroom and we'll see what this uh, option actually does. Now, as you can see, this is a JPEG image here. And one thing to note is the C30, 60, and 120 modes on the Z8 and Z9 actually only shoot in JPEG mode. And depending on which mode you shoot at, it will change the quality level of JPEG to either fine or basic or normal, I believe. It does not shoot in RAW, so keep that in mind that these will be JPEGs that you're shooting when you use the pre and post release burst modes. This image here is of a tree swallow at a uh, box at a local park that I, I frequently visit. So if we zoom in here, we can see that the swallow is uh, perched right on the opening of the box there. And what we can't see is that there is another swallow inside the box right there. And I knew that eventually that swallow was going to come out and fly out because it was going in and out all the time, uh, probably looking for food or something. So uh, I was waiting there with my 100 to 400 lens. It was overcast. It was actually raining. During the brief moment that it stopped raining, I decided to do this test. So it was very foggy or misty, as you can see here. Uh, there is actually no editing done on this image. It's straight out of the camera JPEG uh, imported directly into Lightroom. So my settings at 1 1,000th of a second f 6.3 at ISO 2000. And this is what it gave me. Uh, let's look at my other images. So this is the first image of the entire series. So image number 128 here. Let's go all the way down to 171. And that's the entire series of one burst that I did. And how do I know that? Well, from image 128 to 158 is actually 30 images and I was uh, shooting this at C30 mode which is 30 frames per second and when I did the pre-burst so this particular point right here 158 or uh, 9 this is when I press the shutter button so I managed to press the shutter button just as the second swallow was uh, essentially flying straight out of the swallow box now, I was able to do this because I half anticipated the fact that the swallow was going to come out because he did actually spend a little bit of time. As you can see, I'm scrolling behind. He spent a little bit of time out of the box, either talking with the first swallow or doing something. I think they're exchanging foods or something. So I knew eventually that the second swallow was going to actually fly right out. And I... Uh, with my anticipation, I, my first shot was this particular shot right when he was actually flying out of the swallow box. Now, with the C30 pre-burst mode, it actually buffers 30 images uh, before I press that shutter button fully. So let's go back to grid mode. These 30 images are all right here from 128 to 158, those were all cached inside the memory of the Nikon Z8. And as soon as I pressed the shutter button, it actually made those JPEG images. So this is pre-burst capture, all of this. And as soon as it flies out, this is when 
I actually pressed the shutter button and I didn't press, I didn't hold down the shutter button for too long. So I actually just managed to capture the bird as it flew out of the frame. And I believe this is the last image or yeah, next to the last image right there. So that in essence is uh, pre and post burst mode. This is the point where I press the shutter button and it managed to capture 30 frames before I press the shutter button just by buffering the images inside the memory of the Nikon Z8. And I held down the shutter button for a bit of time shortly after that. So it managed to capture another 158 to 171 images. So that's how pre and burst mode works. So that, in a nutshell, is the pre and post burst mode feature of the Nikon Z8, also available on the Nikon Z9. I hope that clarifies a few of your questions about what this feature is all about, and I hope you're able to use it as well, because I feel like it is a game changer. It has enabled me to capture uh, bird photos that I would never have been able to capture otherwise, and it's a great feature for both cameras. Uh, so please do use it if you have the opportunity. Thanks so much for watching my video, and I hope to see you in the next one, and take care.